Hi, here's Chris. I had the opportunity to do some research and self edutainment how to work with Blender's geometry nodes. In this video, I show you one of my results. If you like, you can use the link in the video description and download this Geometry Note 3 for free. So let's see what I've done. I have here a Suzanne and I have created a geometry node tree that is based on curves to create seams here on this object. Uh, before you start, you have to know what to do. First, you have to append the nodes for the geometry nodes modifier and then you can use it later here uh, on one of the objects. So, okay, I have here a surface or an object where the seams have to be placed on. And in this case, it's just Suzanne. It's a limited Suzanne with some subdivisions here. The next what we need is or are the seams. So what uh, have to be used for this? I have created some seam objects here. And as you can see, there are three seams object uh, seams objects and they have some limited or some some material on it and how the shape is it's on you uh, you can create all the shapes you want i have done this shapes why i have done the shapes in this uh, in this uh, form uh, because uh, these are the seams or the lines that are going into a surface if we have a surface here these are the lines that are uh, diving into the turf surface and here we have the center you can see the centers here in the other objects also and the center will be placed directly here on the surface so the next seams will be placed here and so on okay and we have to uh, the best is to place the uh, center at this position but my <clears throat> geometry nodes tool uh, allow you to change the height or to shift the position if you want later. Good, so this is what we have. We have a surface object, Suzanne, and some seams. You can, uh, you have to place the seams, the best is you place them into a collection. And I hide the collection, go back to Suzanne, here we have it. And now uh, we need, uh, now we need I no, no 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 some extras okay now we need uh, a curve uh, that's very easy you uh, add a curve object I do it with shift add and uh, wait I switch my my keyboard recorder on wait good okay now you see what I'm doing um, you add here a curve object to do this you just go to shift a at a busier curve and now we see we have here a curve the position of the curve is not important but it's good to place it in the center for example or to or to uh, parent the curve with the main object of the surface where it have to be placed on the next step we do here we see the curve i place the curve here into this collection this is our first seam you don't have to rename it if you don't want, but I do it here. Okay, so we have this Bezier curve. I go into the Bezier curve um, object, or before I do it, I add a geometry nodes tree to it. So, okay, here we have it. Now you have a geometry nodes tree on this curve. Nothing happens because there is no geometry nodes tree in this geometry nodes modifier. And you can see it here, the modifier is red, there is no tree, so it's red. <clears throat> and we have appended it here, my tree, before we added or we used it for the scene. And now you can choose it here and uh, append it. Uh, um, a geometry nodes tree will appear here. And you can choose it now. It's, it's CW curves auto seams. And now it's activated. And what we see, we see at the moment nothing because our geometry nodes uh, tool here needs some information. So first we have to say what collection is used for choose the seams to be placed somewhere. 
So we see our theme collection is this one, the hidden one, and we can choose this one here now. Here it is. And now the curve gets already some seams. But the seams are not placed on the surface. We have to do it now. So we go into the curve here and go into the edit mode. And what you can do now is you can delete all the vertices of this curve of the default curve and we are still in the edit mode and what you can do now is you, there are some tools appearing here for the curve editing and you go now to the draw tool and choose the mode from cursor to surface to paint a curve on a surface and you have some more options here um, but we just need the basic option for this demonstration and what i do now is i paint a curve here on this surface okay and as you can see because of the surface mode i go now out of the edit mode we already see a curve placed on the surface the uh, negative point of uh, curves in blender when they are placed is they are not really well aligned on the surface to compensate this to to solve this as you can see it's here it's very very hard the seams are not looking very nice and to solve this i have uh, created a special routine or a special node tree in a, inside my uh, geometry nodes uh, and this tree corrects this problem to do this you go here and ch choose the surface mesh <clears throat> to be used for the correction and the surface mesh, of course, is our Suzanne. So you choose this then object here, and it will be used as the surface mesh for our surface mesh correction. And you see nothing happens because this um, this uh, mode have to be switched on. Maybe you need you don't need this mode for any reason, so you can switch it on or off. And in our case, we want to use it because we want to have very nice placed seams. So, okay, I switch it on to one and you see the seams are now placed in the right uh, direction. They are now very nice aligned, okay? And without this mode, they are aligned to the, to the tilt or to the alignment of the curve. And this is not very nice or not working very well. So this is my correction and you see now all seams are placed into the right direction. So let's see, <coughs> sorry. So let's see what we have, uh, what what options we have uh, here. We can do a set shift. So this means if we can shift the seams up and down uh, along the, the, the surface here, okay? This is the first option you can do. Then we have the distance uh, option. Uh, it's self-explaining, you can change the distance between the seams okay this one and uh, let's say we have a look 0.1 or a bit more this is our distance first here then you have a user rotation so you have x y z axis and you can rotate the objects locally you can do it in different axes and let's say you rotate here to mm, 15 degree and all objects are now rotated to 15 degree in one direction plus or minus depending what you want the next one the option is use a random rotation so what does it mean if you uh, zero means it's off and if you say one all objects are now random rotated and the rotation uh, value or the rotation random rotation this uh, uh, you have to say it is the the range for the random rotation is placed or based on this value what does it mean when i first i show you if you change the values you see the random rotation changes because the values here up from one means a different seed for the random value zero is off so everything is rotated in the same in the, in the same degree direction and with one, you have the first seed, second seed, and so on. You have different seeds for random results. Good. This is the first thing. So how does it work with the rotation, with the random rotation? To understand it, as you know, I can show you the curve. The curve is going here, okay, in this direction here. 
and the rotation is 30 degrees and random inside of a range. What is the range? The range is very easy. If this is the curve, wait, better. If this is a curve, then we have a rotation. Let's say this R plus 30 degree and this R minus 30 degree. Then the rotation, the random rotation is between this uh, angles here, this values. So this value here will be taken plus and minus 30 degrees and inside this range, the rotation will appear. Okay, this is all what you have to know. The same works, of course, with the other axis. Good, this is for our random rotation. I switch it off and make it straight again. Good. The next is user scale. Very easy. You can use all the values here to scale your object. You can scale it in three directions. Then we have a select object option. This is very interesting too, because as you can see at the moment, the objects will be selected in the original order here inside the collection. So it means this is the first object, second, the third, and again, 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 and so on. It will loops. It loops. And this is the mode zero select object. So it means selecting an object is switched off and the order will be used that is here in the, inside the collection. And to use one of the objects here, just one, you can select them by clicking on one. And now the first object inside the collection will be taken if you switch to the second one and so on. And if you have less than or, or not more than three objects and go to four, it now starts again at the first object and so on and loops. So you can choose one of the objects just by choosing a number and you have just one object, one object on this uh, theme here on this element. So and now you can do some nice things. You can change the distance. You can rotate the object, for example, and change the distance then. And you can do nice things and change the shifting. And basically you have everything you need to create in such a nice curve. Okay, um, then we have seams random order. So if you choose the regular seam uh, um, order here inside the collection, then you can set a random order. Zero means no random order will be used and the order inside the collection will be used. But if you switch the random order on, then you see now the seams are used not in the same order again and looping. They are used random. Now you have random placed object on the curve. And the higher the value, the different the different is the seat for this random value. So you can choose any the one you, you like. Okay, now we have always random placed objects. Good. The next one is a uh, seam shift start and end. This is very interesting for animation because you can set a keyframe here if you want. So this is a shift start position zero, and this is a shift end position. So when I choose this value, you see the curve starting point ch changes of every single curve here and the ending point. So now you can adjust a little bit the curve or you can animate it if you want. Now we have another uh, another uh, option. It, it's called seam break circled. What does it mean? Uh, it's uh, depending or it's something you have to uh, you need if you have circled curves, you closed curves that are a circle. So um, then in this case, the shift and start and uh, elements here uh, don't work native. So you have to break the circled elements to use them. I show it to you and in this uh, and, and show you how to create another scene. So it's very easy. I choose this scene, for example, make a duplication. You can create a new one if you want to. So and go into the edit mode and delete all the vertices of the second Bezier curve and create a new one. So that is here. And I connect these two points now and uh, make a segment. Okay, now they are connected and we have a circle object, closed curve. Okay, and now you see 
this option is not working here. Not possible to create, to shift the positions. To do this, you now need the scene break circled and you set it to one. And now this circle is broken or broke, breaked, it's uh, in, uh, interrupted. And now you can change the position here or here. Okay. Why I've done this? Because um, there's a limitation. You can, uh, you are not able directly to do this. You need a special function here to do, to break a circle to, to create this. Okay, so this is the reason why we need break circuit. If you switch it on or off, then it's connected again. All these values can be keyframed if you need it. Yeah, uh, we, we are nearly ready. Um, now we have some debugging options. You can say you want to hide the seams, so they are hidden. And now we see here the curve. You can now show or hide the curve. The default value is hide the curve. You don't want to see it, but if you want, you can unhide it. And the next one is we have a custom material. Um, at the moment, uh, the the object uh, is uh, selected. So this object will be used. Uh, uh, the materials of the original object inside collection will be used. So if, for example, this material would be original material would be red, it would be the red material. But I have added an option to at a custom material and now you can choose a custom material let's say the yellow one and nothing happens at the moment because you have to activate it so you go to one and now the uh, custom material the user material will override the original material you can do this for this one also yellow on and now you see all the seams have have a new custom material it's a single material that will be placed here if you switch it off, the materials of every single object will be used. So, uh, yeah, this is the routine how to create seams based on curves and my result of my experiments. I hope you like it. You can use it uh, if you want for your projects and download it for free on my Gumroad page or somewhere else. And I wish you a lot of fun with it. Okay, bye bye. See you next time.